have to do now with future young change makers at Brown University. I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to share my story with you guys. A special thanks to Kathy Bay for inviting me and all of you for my heart. So thank you for that. Today I'm going to talk about several things from my presentation. I'll try to get some of the clips of the refugee crisis that's going on around the world. I'll also share my personal refugee narrative and my story in Bologna. And I'm also going to emphasize that how college students can make an impact in the refugee communities. Some of the refugees around the world who are trying to space around the world. 
Obstacles have time to lose me in my dreams and to never give up. My mother's dream was to form up. My mother's dream was for my sons and I to obtain a real recognition. When my mother and I sat down to work on the floor of the house, I don't know what it means. It was everything in the world that my mother's dream was now a reality. I was the first one family to graduate from high school and school college education and accepted into a prestigious private school and participated in collegiate athletic athletics. My mind struggles and sins that led me onto a path of continuously trying to help others. To live my dreams for all those who only live their eyes, never forgetting them. I'm inspired to keep moving forward and trying to become a better person for my family. I was unfortunately left behind by my community whose stories are almost the same as mine. My mother constantly reminds me that we are the ones who are never able to achieve our dreams. Hearts and hearts to create the dreams of the white belly refugees who are grateful to have started a better life. 
you have any questions, just make sure that you grab a mic yep. before you start speaking so that everyone can hear. Yes. Thank you. I, um, my name is Rebecca, and I work at an organization in Providence called Beautiful Day. And we're a social enterprise as well. We make granola, and we hire only refugees to do so. We should connect. <laughs> that's, that's why I'm here. That's awesome. I, uh, I was interested in, um, in finding out from you, I'm assuming you're, as a 501c3, that you um, are receiving donations as well as income from the sale of your products. We are not a 501c. We are a oh. social for-profit company. Oh, you are a for-profit yes. company. That's okay. So you're not, ex you do not take donations or, or you do or? We do not take donations. Okay. Yes. So All we, right. We are set up as a social enterprise company. Uh, uh, we are in the process of being a B Corp in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. So um, the reason why, uh, I get this a lot of questions. The reason why we took that route is because uh, there's not a lot of private sector companies uh, out there who's making an impact. And private sector companies can really make an impact and can really scale really fast. And mm -hmm. at first, when I started Dream Refugee, it was a 501c3, but the thing that I had was struggling with was there was not a lot of donation. I didn't have a lot of support. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was to create a product line where I can get support and have uh, innovative solutions to support these refugees. Mm -hmm. And obviously, being a nonprofit, it's difficult with the regulation and laws that uh, as being a 501c3, you can't hire you know, refugees. It's, there's a lot to it. So for me, it was to go that route, mm -hmm. so yes. We hire refugees as trainees and yep. then pay them a stipend, that's which right. is you know yep. how, we, how we deal with that. Literally, um, that's what we do. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was wondering then, would you mind telling us what your annual budget is? My annual budget? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I mean, so, we're, so when I started uh, uh, Epimonia, um, our, our revenue was 40K that year because it was June to, you know, I started Things were picking up once I graduated from college. And last year, um, we made around 110000 in revenue. Great. Yep. And this year, we're scaling. But, you know, we hope we donate over 30000 30, So Great. Thank you so much. Yep, so I, let's talk afterwards. <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> Hi. Thank yes. you for speaking today. Yep. My name is Sarah. I have a, an odd question, maybe. Yep. Um, I think probably everyone in this room wishes you amazing success Thank with you. Epimonia. And the logical thing, yep. uh, if you push that thought yep. a little bit farther, is that we hope that you run out of life vests. Life, that's the <laughs> goal, yes. So what, <laughs> what happens when the refugee yep. crisis is solved? Is, uh, you know, all I can say is I can't, I'm a, I, I, I probably I'll never solve the refugee crisis because the refugee crisis unfortunately is an ongoing thing it's been happening in the past centuries you know uh, you know due to war and people's greed you know I feel like the refugee crisis will never go away unfortunately you know if we if we be very transparent um, but if the life jacket runs out there's uh, there's another opportunities that we can take you know like using recycled tents from refugees you know um, there's another element that I can go but I feel like using that using that life jacket is still a symbolic you know, way of creating awareness. And for that, let's say if we run out of the life jacket, we'll keep using raw life jacket. But at the same time, it has a story to it, you know. But finding another ways of, you know, using, continuing that story, you know, um, getting the recycled tents could be a possibility. Later. I hope you have that problem someday. <laughs> yes, yeah, so hopefully. Hi, thank you for your talk. Thank um, you. So I have a couple of questions. One is, you use the term greed, um, and I would push further and yep. say what that greed is coming from. Yep. Uh, if it's greed, or if what are the social systems of um, structural violence that has caused people yep. to um, go and um, pillage others. Yep. Um, and then the other question is, so you, you spent three and a half years, yep. so the average refugee time is 15 years, 15 years and right. a lot of people don't know that, so yes. yep. just to emphasize that at some level, your it's three wrong. years yeah. is Unfortunately. Re a relatively small and amount of time, and yep. people don't know how long people are usually in refugee camps. So they can be there 20 years, people are born there. Yep. Um, That's right. 
So the word greed, um, you know, uh, for me, in my perspective, is, you know, furthering their personal interest over humanity. And I feel like those situations ends up of being, that causes war, you know. You know, I'm not into, uh, I'm not into, like, I'm not into those, with the politics things that's go going on around the world, you know, uh, that's unfortunate because that leads up to war, you know, when people have a personal interest, they want to further their agenda, unfortunately. Every political uh, person in this world, you know, has a task, you know, whether you're, if you're the president of the United States, whether you're the president of a certain country, they have a personal agenda, you know, to further, uh, they choose themselves over humanity. And for that, that causes or leads to uh, unfortunate scenes like war and whatnot. So that's where I'm coming from. That's where I'm coming from. Um, what was your second question? Yep. Yes, so unfortunately, you know, uh, right now you said the average time is 15 years. Back then, um, it was three years for my family. Um, and that, that shows you that there's a lot of NGOs. They're not that, they're, that, that just shows you the skeptical that what's going on, you know all this budget you guys have, you know, for example, UNHCR, we, pro we provide them, but our nonprofit, we work with close uh, nonprofits rather than giving our money to bigger uh, NGOs uh, because I can see the very, I can see the impact right away, you know. So that's why I work with the International Institute of Minnesota. We, we uh, donate our money and help refugees become U.S. citizens. Uh, we cover their fee. We can say, hey, we helped five refugees, you know, et cetera, rather than giving our money to uh, a, a big organization, you know, like ten, that 10,000 donation could be a really impactful to a small nonprofit rather than a big one. So yes, uh, I, unfortunately the refugee crisis is an ongoing thing. And you know, like I said, private sector companies needs to step up, you know, in order for them to play a role because there's a lot of NGOs, but we need innovative solutions. And I feel like having those private sector companies, big corporation, can play a role and can, they can make it really impact, whether it's job deployment, whether it's uh, financially, you know, investing in refugee companies, you know, um, something, you know, and I urge them to step that up, you know, so, yeah. Thank you for your talk. Thank How you. did you start your company um, in college? You were in were you ending college or um, or in general just how did yep. you start your company as a relatively young person yep. having to move the, through these systems exactly. raising money doing yep. all these things 100 percent. so it's interesting you know uh so once i got into college my goal was to you know graduate get a four-year uh <laughs> diploma and get a good job that was the you know that was my mom's goal you know my dream but i didn't expect going to college to start a company you know that was interesting so um so during my junior year, you know, what, one moment that inspired me uh, was when the current uh, President Trump came to Minnesota and literally just talked mad hate towards refugees, you know. And that hit me hard, you know, where I've seen a visit. It, it was a, he visited at St. Cloud um, where he just literally backlashed the Somali community. And that time it was for me, it was at that point, I didn't want to start a company. For me, it was I talked, I hired, uh, had my friends who was a photographer. Hey, let's go out of the community and change this narrative. What he's conveying, you know, this is not right. And that that led up to starting Dream Refugee, where I captured over thirty uh, thirty stories. Um, it was yeah, 30, around thirty stories from interviewing Halima Adhan. Uh, she's an IMG model. She's the first hijabi from uh, uh, Minnesota. From interviewing. Uh, Nuni, he's a, a basketball player at Baylor University. So these refugees, I had the privilege to capture their stories and to capture the a narrative. And, and we don't hear in the media a lot of success stories. You know, we just hear refugees, how they come to our country, take our jobs, etc. But we don't hear the success, how they contribute, you know. Uh, for me, that was the moment of starting Dream Refugee. And, and starting Epimonia was the next goal, you know. Was, how can I support them? Obviously, I'm creating awareness through storytelling. Now, how can I uh, create and support these refugees, you know? And that was the journey of Epimorni, the birth uh, for me, where uh, creating product line and hiring refugees. So, yeah. And for me, it's like, I, I tell college to take that risk, you know? You know, literally take that risk. For me, I t it was, uh, for me, it was, I took that risk because of 
what's what's happening currently. It was a sense of urgency, you know. So and it led up to other opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. Could you speak a little bit about your experiences with racism as yeah. a young as a young man yeah. um, and when, what effect that had? Yep. on you and also who were your allies in school because mm -hmm. you know you, you're alone you yep. know as, as a refugee right. but there's other people that usually yep. can come to the rescue so to speak right. uh, uh, to, to be your advocates yep. uh, so who helped you in, in school yep. who were your yep. you know greatest detractors 100 percent. so um growing up i faced yes racism i faced a lot of stereotypes uh, i even faced stereotypes within my own people you know being a Somali, light-skinned Somali, you know, people wouldn't believe me I was Somali. I had to convey them. I had to speak Somali to just to let them know, I'm, hey, I'm one of your people, you know. So that was kind of interesting, you know, growing up my childhood, you know. But at the University of St. Thomas, um, I, had, I had a great amount of people who helped me support, you know, especially the school, you know. Um, I had a great mentor. Uh, her name is Kathleen McLennan. She's still helps me. So how I met her was through high school. Um, her husband is the CEO of Cargo Corporation. So, you know, that support system led me to, you know, find myself, find my purpose and being an advocate and just being, having her right on my side helped me tremendously, you know. Uh, she, you know, whenever I need help or whenever I need someone to connect with, I rely on her, you know, hey, connect me with these people, hey, connect with these people. She was right there, you know, and still, you know, uh, helps me. and. Having those support system can go a long way, you know, for me. And obviously, coming from a family with not a lot of resources, you know, not a lot of opportunities, I had to self dug myself, you know, and put myself out there in you know, order for me to succeed, you know, and get out of my comfort zone and, you know, just seek help, you know, in terms of like seek if there's any opportunities, ask questions. So, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um. I'm going to ask, like, why fashion? Why through yep. fashion? Yep. Uh, you, I'm pretty sure you saw something yep. uh, in your, yep. uh, the human That's dynamics right. yep. and everything. So. First of all, I'm not a designer, you know. I yeah. consider myself a uh, social entrepreneur, you know. When, people, when I'm designing these products, it just it just comes through my creativity, you know. So I'm a very creative person. But the reason why fashion is because, you know, there's a lot of millennials right now, you know, people wear fashion, it's just like a statement. You know, what you wear is what you support, you know, personally, I believe in, you know. And, you know, trending as things are going uh, in the future, I feel like millennials are, they're playing a huge role, you know, in the fashion industry, you know. They're creating a lot of brands, social brands, whether it's a bracelet company, whether it's a apparel company that supports an initiative. And for me, that was the route. And for me, particularly, there's not a lot of, refugee fashion brands out there and being the upcoming refugee brand you know that supports refugee that's founded by refugee that operates refugee that re invests in refugees that's amazing you know and for that i want to be that brand where i can say hey this company supports refugee and it was founded by a former refugee you know when people think about refugee i want to think, think about epimony hey there's a brand that supports refugees you know and fashion is a great way to express yourself and to uh, feel, you know, to stand what you wear and to uh, wear, you know, um, just to, it's a, it's a great platform to express, yeah, so. Hi, um, what do you think the importance is of you being someone who comes from the refugee community and being able to start this business and yep. having an effect and changing the story rather than being someone who doesn't necessarily yep. have that experience? That's right. That's interesting, you know. Um, when I started Dream Refugee, you know, refugees are very careful of sharing of sharing their stories, you know, especially who like where where this short where will my story be displayed, etc. But one thing I found interesting was, you know, they were very comfortable with me because it was similarities, you know, um, and like you said, you know, having a refugee brand that's operated refugees is very critical because it's very authentic, you know, to your brand, you know, for me. And that reason was, because there's a lot of stories out there, you know, that's not for, ref it's not by refugees, and it, it, can, it, can get, it can get lost, you know, with the mixture of, this, the context can get lost, and obviously that will lead up to, like, xenophobic hate, you know. But having stories that's shared by refugees is critical, you know, and just sharing that critical aspect is huge, so, yeah. Yeah, I have two questions. 
I'm here. Uh, yes. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, um, what is the visibility of your organization? Like, does it it's only in the U.S. or you have like an international, global visibility? And yeah. then the other question we was uh, connected to the one about fashion, because mm -hmm. I was also surprised, like in the association of uh, the refugee crisis, yeah. the, this drama, right? And yeah. then the fas fashion that, in our perception, is something. Uh, somehow mm, short-term, mm. superficial, mm. connect to luxury, right? So uh, beyond the bracelets, yes. um, are you thinking about uh, other um, fashion objects that yeah. you're going to... And also, I want to know whether the bracelets, somehow they're also distributed to the to some of the people of the refugee community as if they are like a symbol that the yeah. community recognizes such or not? So the first question you said was the visibility. International visibility yes. of your organization. So um, since this is an international yeah, crisis. That's so. right. So um, we're currently focused in the US. Our company is almost two years right now. So we don't have a lot of global visibility. Um, but hopefully, as our company grows, that's the goal. Um, but we partner up with a uh, local nonprofit organization in the U.S. that supports refugees, uh, new arrivals, you know. And the reason why I chose the U.S. because I want to focus in the U.S. first, you know, first make that impact before supporting a global initiative. Um, but we do have a one global visibility. So our nonprofit uh, called Refugee for Refugees, uh, is he's, uh, his name is Umar. Uh, he's based in uh, Greece. Uh, our company supports his organization. He's a former refugee from Syria. Um, uh, provide that support, uh, and that's the first partnership outside of the U.S. because they supply the refugees' life jackets, and we provide them with uh, other financial uh, that can help uh, their nonprofit as well. So yes, but that's the goal. That's the goal, you know, uh, for me to once this uh, company grows, I would love to have a global visibility, you know. But it's it's on the right trajectory of uh, making that happen. So. Um, for your second questions, yes, we are currently thinking about expanding our product line. For example, next month we are releasing, hopefully our goal is to release the Apple Band. Uh, that's basically, uh, we'll incorporate that into the Live Jacket. So if you guys are a big fan of Apple watches, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, use the Live Jacket with the bands and hopefully pitch that to Apple, you know. And that's one of my goals. Um, and in order for me to really scale and really make that impact, I feel like you have to work with uh, bigger companies, bigger corporation to uh, align you with your vision and mission, you know, for that. And that's how I've managed to strategically uh, partner with, you know, for example, we partnered with Love Your Melon. I don't know if you're, they're a Minnesota brand company with the beanies, they support cancer. What they did was uh, uh, they took the beanies, uh, the patch is made out of the life jacket, you know, and it was a great uh, 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 partnership uh, because He's a uh, fellow uh, St. Thomas alumni and whatnot. And for me, it was uh, in order for me to make that impact really fast and uh, grow really fast is to uh, collaborate with bigger companies. So to get your name out there. So And I've been doing that uh, pretty well so far. So now it's taking the next level. Any other questions? Don't be shy, so <laughs> feel free wherever you guys, you know, so. Yes. I just have a question. I wanted to know if you are um, thinking about supporting other causes for like um, all the refugees around the world. Can you elaborate that, other causes as in well, like there's um, all the refugees throughout the world. Yep. So basically, uh, I was wondering if you are thinking about um, helping them as yep. well, or That's is it right. just one particular group of refugees yep. that you are uh, pointing to? Well, I'm, I mean, so our company helps refugees that come from different backgrounds. You know, it's not one particular group, you know. Um, it's, especially in Minnesota, there, there's the Hmong refugees. Yep. We hire Hmong refugees to produce our product line. Um, we, uh, you know, uh, invest in, we help refugees pay for their citizenship application. Um, that's Somali, there's Syrians, you know. 
Um, and we also provide uh, a scholarship for refugee high school students, you know, to pursue their colleges. So we support different demographic of refugees, you know, but that just focus on in the U.S. particular, you know. But my long-term goal for five years to ten years, I would like to take that to global, and hopefully we can support different uh, NGOs, you know, uh, refugees. Uh, and I'm very, you know, uh, interested in doing that once our company grows. But right now, uh, I want to start small. I want to make an impact here in the U.S. In particular, and hopefully just growing, there'll be another agenda. So. But yes, that's my goal. I have a question. I just want to, we talked before, but I wanted to, you guys, if you could give us a little bit, a glimpse of what's going on in your state. I know you have a big uh, number of refugees. That's I know right. we have prominent um, representation in the, yes. in the Congress. Yeah. That's right. How, how is your state handling yep. itself? My, my state, they're, they're handling pretty well. You know, yeah. for example, we have Congress uh, uh, woman Ilhan Omar, who representing our state, you know, being the first uh, Somali Congress woman. Uh, that's a huge success, and, and there's a lot of lawmakers, there's a lot of city councilors who, who are former refugees, you know. So Minnesota, they're doing really well of, you know, just shifting the dynamic um, of having these uh, former refugees, you know, represent their cities, you know, and that's a great thing. And we are very open, you know, to it. So, um, yeah, uh, there is doing really well, you know. And we, tomorrow we'll be having Bernie Sanders. Is it tomorrow? Bernie Sanders will be coming to Minnesota, so. Uh, that's exciting. Unfortunately, I'll miss that, but you know, I got my void in. So, <laughs> but yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming to Brown. Thank you and so much for having me. Yep. 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 Got it. Thank you guys so much for taking time.